Over the next few minutes, I'd like to discuss a few of the ways that the United States and all of us need to work together in a cooperative spirit with our law enforcement officers around the globe to achieve successes that benefit all of us. First, we have seized or restrained $3.5 billion worth of corrupt proceeds involved in money laundering offenses. $3.5 billion. Since 2004, the United States has returned millions in corrupt proceeds to compensate victims around the world. That includes approximately $119 million to the people of Italy, $115 million to the people of Kazakhstan, more than $20 million to the people of Peru, millions more to the people of Nicaragua, South Korea, and Taiwan. That recovery has only been possible because of the cooperation internationally with our law enforcement partners. You may be familiar with some of the cases. For example, nearly half of the $3.5 billion in corruption proceeds we have restrained is related to just one law enforcement action. The action was related to a Malaysian sovereign wealth fund known as 1MDB. 1MDB was created by the Malaysian government to promote long-term economic development for the benefit of the Malaysian people. But allegedly, corrupt officials and their associates reportedly used the funds for a lavish spending spree. $200 million for real estate in Southern California and New York. $130 million for artwork. $100 million in an American music company. Not to mention a $265 million yacht. In total, 1MDB officials allegedly laundered more than $4.5 billion in funds through a complex series of, of opaque transactions and fraudulent shell companies with bank accounts in countries ranging from Switzerland to Singapore, Luxembourg, and the United States. This is kleptocracy at its worst. Today, the United States Department of Justice is working to provide justice to the victims of these alleged schemes. As a prosecutor for 14 years, I know firsthand that the best evidence is often simple things like bank records, airplane records, telephone records. If they're not properly shared between nations, then in many cases, justice just cannot be done, or certainly it's delayed. It is essential that we continue to improve this kind of information sharing. It does not threaten our sovereignty. It does not threaten our legal system. But it's part of a cooperative effort that benefits us all. So that's why we must all do more to expedite mutual legal assistance requests. It's something I have an interest in and, and become informed on and believe that we at the United States need to do better about. And I hope you will consider that. These requests ensure that prosecutors have the evidence they need to bring a criminal to justice. And in response to the increasing volume and complexity of legal assistance requests, our department, the Department of Justice, has taken two actions that are critically important uh, since I've become Attorney General. First, we've increased staffing levels at the Department's Office of International Affairs, or OIA. Second, OIA has created two new units dedicated to reviewing and executing uh, uh, foreign information requests. As a result, OIA has significantly reduced its backlog by thousands of cases in the last uh, number of months, despite receiving 16% uh, more requests uh, in fiscal year 2016 than in 2015. So these are important steps, but we must and can do more to help each other. So I challenge all of you to devote uh, uh, to quickly and effectively devote more resources uh, to these problems, reducing your backlog too. You know how serious these cases can be. There's no time to waste. Delay uh, in records is a delay in justice. We will do our part, but we've got to have partnerships from all of you.
All of us need to do a better job of properly evaluating extradition requests. Uh, and it's unacceptable, I think, for nations, and so many do, flatly refuse to extradite uh, their own citizens who've committed crimes in another country. We simply have got to work on this. Uh, it is not uh, a way to have partnerships to give safe haven to people who commit crimes in our brother and sister countries. The United States uh, seeks to participate in economic activity worldwide. We believe we have a strong record of fairly and professionally prosecuting criminal uh, activity globally, and we will work hard to assist our global partners in their uh, efforts to crack down on fraud and abuse. But we will ins insist on cooperation also from our global partners. Many of the countries in this room have honored our extradition request, allowing fugitives to undergo the judicial process in the United States, and we work hard to make sure everyone in this country is given fair trial. And I want to thank you for that. Thank also so many of you who share information on a regular basis so that we can crack down on uh, international frauds. And we are working to plan uh, to be quicker and more effective for you in the future. Cooperation works. It's essential. We know that at the Department of Justice firsthand. So thank you all for the ongoing efforts against crime. We fully respect your borders and the importance of borders. Indeed, borders are a central component of sovereignty, but if we work together, respectful of each other's rights, we can more effectively stop transnational criminals. And we must do so. So I look forward to working together with you and to, and to achieve many more successes in the future.